All right, we're back, and now we're going to look at auto trace. Um, I call this auto trace. It's because um, I called it that in a previous version of Stroke It, where what was happening is uh, you'd input an image, and then um, the system would kind of read out the uh, kind of discover the the color islands in the image, kind of the the blocks of color, and then use that to generate paths, which then became uh, paint strokes. So in a way, it was kind of tracing the image automatically, and then using those to create the paths of the strokes. Um, this one's a little bit different. This is generating an image um, that looks a little bit more to me like um, it was done with a palette knife or with a kind of heavy buildup of paint. So um, if you look over here in the in the camera uh, render, you can see if you look carefully that um, there's really a feel here of um, individual strokes of quite thick paint um, being drawn up here. And like I said before, this is automatic. It's, um, it's generated for you um, instantly. Um, I say instantly, sorry. It could take a little while to process. It takes about two minutes to go from photograph um, to this point uh, on this picture. And that depends a lot on um, the resolution of the image you put in. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show kind of how to use it. And then um, in another one, in a longer one, show um, how it works. Because I think it's really important to see how this functions because I think it opens a whole lot of doors to using COPS in an interesting way. So uh, first of all, let's just um, kind of backtrack here a little bit and talk about kind of how we got to this point. Uh, over here in um, the auto trace setup, um, I've got auto trace here selected. Uh, just by the way, for rendering, if I go back to uh, my render setup, I'm now viewing the right hand side of this setup here in, uh, in the stage context in Solaris. Um, to view the auto trace setup. So this one over here on the left, that's the freehand one we were looking at before. Now we're looking here at this auto trace setup. So make sure you're viewing that in order to get a render out of it. Um, so if I just go over to um, this auto trace node here, um, and um, as you can see, it's made the image left on the left uh, yellow when I did this, but um, let me just turn it, click off that. So there's a photograph here um, that I loaded in, uh, kind of. Um, Catalan, French, French Catalan city um, with a, a kind of a port here and a beach. Um, and that's the image I loaded in. You can see where I loaded it in up here where it says image to trace. Um, and we've got this uh, control here for basically just loading in a file. Um, I'm not going to change these other things right now because basically they'll require the whole system to cook again. But you have brightness, which you can play around with um, and just make the image more or less intense. Um, and crop here, which you can use anything less than one will start to zoom in on the image. Um, and that's really useful if you want to um, add layers of um, higher resolution to, to an image. So for instance, if you're doing a face and you want to go and do another render, which is just the eyes and then composite that together, you add those together in Photoshop or Nuke, you can do that by doing a zoom in and setting up, setting, running the whole process again and rendering again. And it works pretty well. Um, if you do zoom, then you might want to use these offsets here. Uh, sorry, if you do crop, use these offsets here to position the image inside there. Um, now, if I switch from uh, image setup to process geometry, um, that is where uh, Houdini will then cook this whole process. And it does, I said it does take a couple minutes just to do this one. Um, but now you can see over here on the left kind of what's going on. What has happened is um, my setup has actually broken the image down into lots of various pieces, which each one of these is one of these kind of chiseled brush strokes. So for instance, if I zoom in here, uh, you're gonna let me zoom in, uh, you can see the geometry there. And if I zoom in here in the image, you can see uh, there's a corresponding um, bit of paint there. Um, one thing I'll point out now, and then I'm gonna explain a lot more in the next video, is that this geometry that you see here is not what's rendering here. This geometry is just feeding into COPS to build a texture map. And that's what's so interesting about how this works. So basically, once you've gone from uh, your image setup to process geometry, that is when Houdini will cook all of this. It will take a little bit of time, and then you come into COPS, uh, sorry, come into um, Karma here, and you should get uh, your image. Um, just a word about the image that you feed in here. Don't go for anything super high res. Anything above 2K will probably take too long and not actually give you the results that you want. And the resolution of the image that you feed in is not directly related to the resolution that you can get out. That's really more about how Houdini processes this and how COPS, how resol high resolution the uh, COPS output is, um, because that's what's creating the texture map that then creates this. So I think this image itself is actually only about 2K tall, and that's plenty. 
um, I can get uh, easily get a 4K render out of this image if I wanted to because I'm using a, I'm creating a higher resolution texture map. So that's uh, kind of how to use it. Um, have fun with it, and in the next video, I'm going to show you in a lot more detail how this works.